Welcome to the Potter Blog site. It's January 4th, 2012. Some breaking news. Thanks to the Fukushima Diary here for making everyone aware of this. And that is that uh, large amounts of lead 210 have been measured in a soil sample from Yokohama, Japan. Now, what is vitally important about this is that this finding corroborates uh, a conjecture that the Potter Blog team has had since nearly day one of Fukushima. And that is that short half-life radiation coming in the fallout from Fukushima uh, correlates to longer half-life radiation fallout products. In essence, where this lead 210 is coming from is that is from radon-laden groundwater in Fukushima, Japan that is being industrially expelled as steam out of the ground uh, via the action of groundwater hitting hot quarium in Japan. Uh, now we first reported that we believe this was happening back on August 20th uh, when we released this video and it, there's a quick shot in here of where quarium is going down into the groundwater and as the quarium, fission and quarium hits the groundwater it steams it up. Now Japanese groundwater is naturally heavily radon laden and oftentimes even more so after earthquakes. Now this, uh, these radon products that come out of here have a short half-life. and So let's look at this real quick. Here's the uh, half-life of a uh, lead 210. It has a 22-year ha half-life. Uh, this is the longest half-life step we run into in terms of human years in this uh, fallout. Now these lines here, uh, the heavy lines are the more probable routes to generate 210. Uh, if you go through these, the only ones that really make sense from this Fukushima uh, scenario is uh, polonium-214, bismuth-214, and lead-214. And these are the daughter products of radon-222. Uh, the thing that's often poo-pooed by people who say, oh, it's just radon in the rainfall. Well, yeah, it's uh, radon being industrially released out of the groundwater in Fukushima. Now, this is functionally the equivalent of uh, the BP oil spill in, uh, in the Gulf of Mexico where you know they were industrially spilling Mother Nature's oil all over the beaches in the Gulf of Mexico. Well, Fukushima is industrially steaming Mother Nature's radon out of the groundwater in Japan and sending it in the jet stream across to the United States. And along with that naturally occurring uh, elevated levels of uh, radon and radon daughter products are the man-made radioactive products coming out of the quarium and the fissioning of the quarium and God knows what else is going on in there with uh, neutron bombardments but it's it's a nightmare that the the slight benefit of this is is we can readily detect uh, lead 214 and uh, bismuth-214 in the rainfall. These have a composite half-life of uh, roughly, uh, I believe it's 36 minutes. So there's a roughly a composite half-life of 36 minutes here. Short half-life uh, fallout is easily detectable by a Geiger counter because it's more active, more, uh, more radioactivity occurs in a given time frame. Uh, by the time it reaches here to PB-210, its activity has calmed down because the half-life is uh, 22 years. Now post August 20th we've had uh, rainfall here in St. Louis that's been as high as uh, 276 times above background level or 2.76 millirems per hour. So you can hear it there and there in that uh, video. Now so this is direct corroboration of what we've been f saying all along and what we've uh, described has been happening in Fukushima. Now this test was performed uh, by an environmental scientifics group out of the UK. This is from a soil sample provided by uh, Dr. Chris Busby. He's a uh, controversial figure in uh, his world, uh, probably because he wears a funny hat. but. The analysis itself is from a group that uh, is, uh, I think can be quest unquestionably stated as above board. So what we have here is basically a Rosetta Stone that allows us to determine PB210 ratios. 
And here we have 84,000 kilograms per uh, back, sorry, back rolls per kilogram. Uh, according to Busby, uh, the quantity expected would be 20 back rolls per kilogram. So we're roughly almost 500 times higher than would be expected. So the ratios of PB210 to these cesium products, cobalt products, all host, host of other things in here, americium 241 We now have a sort of a direct Rosetta Stone where we can take the uh, PB214, lead 214 and bismuth 214 counts we would get with a Geiger counter and determine what the equivalent amount of uh, lead 210 this would decay into and then use the functional equivalent of this chart to estimate how much cesium and plutonium and whatever else nasties is in that uh, exact rainfall. So it's a quick way of doing risk mitigation and that's really what we're aiming for here at the Potter Blog site is risk mitigation, ways for people who, to simply do risk mitigation against the radioactive fallout, to know when it's coming down, what to be aware of. For goodness sake, stay out of the rain. Good night.